Hey, what's up and what's going on, y'all? Welcome to my channel. This is Big Al, of course. And um, this morning was great. Uh, got up and last yesterday went out in the evening and I was trying to target Pompano. And it was a no, a no show up as far as Pompano goes. The water was too rough. Um, it was mainly the winds. The water conditions, I don't think, were that bad. I just think that's because of the wind pushing it the way it was that made it unstable for my lines to really hold tight like they should. I was using six ounce weights and they wasn't able to do anything for me. So I uh, wrapped it up and then I went to the inland. And I went back and fished behind the houses in my area. And there's an area where we can run into black drum when they come through. And of course, I had success with that. So we had five black drum last night. And then this morning, I got back up. And I went and checked the conditions, and I said, okay, looked like the wind isn't blowing that much. It was light. Um, figured that we had a cl little cloud coverage, but I figured I had a window if I um, to get a hold of the Pompano. So that's what I was targeting. I went and targeted Pompano this morning. Of course, it was uh, great. Got five of them. Uh, one nice size one. The rest of them was like um, medium, keepable. Um, so I kept those, and I hit five of them. Using um, Easy Flea Fish Bites, which is the orange and flesh color. Also, I was using a single swivel clamp with a size uh, 3 um, octopus hook on it. And those, I, I trust using that more than I trust using the regular um, Pompano rigs that a lot of people like to use and fish with. The reason being because when I'm out there in that surf, I never know what it's gonna be interested in that easy flea fish bite because it grabs everything. It's not just a pop and no killer. It grabs reds, it grabs uh, specks. Um, I've hit uh, bluefish on them and these are all strong fish. I even had shark come up and grab those fish bites by themselves and cut that line in half. So I don't really trust too much using pop and no rigs. I know a lot of people like to use them, but me myself, I'm old school. I just go with the single swivel clamps. That's what I grew up with. Um, catching those uh, big cats in St. Louis as I was growing up as a kid. Um, and as the weight, I was using a six ounce pyramid. And that was basically it. 50 pound test line and no leader. I mean, no, no, no special setup like mono or no um, fluorocarbon line, any of that. Just regular 50 pound test uh, braid and just a regular old fashioned setup back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. You know, that's how I do it. So anyway, without further ado, we get to the video, and this was over at north side of Fish Pass. I went down some miles down, and I found a marker, and I just drove until I felt comfortable where I thought they would be at, and it was almost probably within 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I had two rides take off. Both rides got hits on them. One of them I got in. The other one, was, he didn't hold on long enough. He, he wound up getting off. And I threw back out, and then I just took my time, was being patient, and they was hitting with, you know, every 30 minutes or something like that. So I took it that it had to be a school that was passing by that was going up and down. Almost the same thing like mullet. I think that's how they roll. You'll see schools of mullet go by, but mullet don't bite on lines. But as far as popping I think they travel the same way. You can't see them, but I think that's what they do because once you get a hit on one rod, usually your other rod will take off too. It's um, just all depends. Sometimes depend on what you're fishing with on the other rod. But I think if I would have been using Easy Flea on both of them, I think I probably would have ran into uh, Pompano back to back. As soon as one took off, I think the other one would have took off. But because I was using another brand of the uh, fish bite, it wasn't really on them as much as they was on the Easy Flea. So anyway, get to the video. Like I said before, man, it's fish on, baby. Y'all know how we do it. Whatever lane you in. Enjoy it, ride it. Don't let nobody take you from it if you're not hurting yourself or you're not hurting anybody. What we what we talking about? So just enjoy your life because we got one to live. Without further ado, let's get to the video. It's fish on, baby. Peace.
good morning to everybody. This is a beautiful Saturday sunrise morning. Fishing down here on the north side of uh, Fish Pass at the surf. And uh, came down this way to see if there may be some pompano hanging out. I'm using my Easy Flea, size uh, two, I uh, know, size three uh, circle hook. Just in case something else does come and grab it. Pompano mouth is big enough to get around these as well. Um, also using a single swivel uh, clamp and a six ounce pyramid. As you can see, six ounce pyramid, along with my 12 foot rods. Get out here to the second gut. Yesterday came out and the wind was, woo! Wind was blowing pretty hard. Couldn't get no control of my rods. Hit the water. Felt like I was fishing back home in the Mississippi River. So, hopefully, be a better turnout this morning before the winds pick up. See if it holds. So, I got the Easy Flea on one, and I also got some shrimp fish bites on the other one here. And I'm gonna put a piece of shrimp on the end of it just to dress it up a little bit and see which one does the best work for me this morning. That'll make my decision. If the Easy Flea doesn't do anything, then I'm definitely going to be rocking the shrimp flavor on both rods. I only got a small window this morning. Went last night, hit some uh, black drum back in the cuts of the houses, of the housing areas where I live at. Got some areas back there where I know fish hang out at. So whenever something not happened, I can always go back there and throw into those back of those houses and pull black drum, red. Never really hit any flounder back there, but I've seen some big flounder caught by mistake. And that's the only reason why I think we don't hit them because nobody really goes back there looking for them. But they're back there. All right, so put this piece on right here. So far, so good. It looked like with my my line looked like it's holding. I mean, yesterday, boy, I came out here in the, in the evening time after two, three o'clock, man, that wind came in, and I mean, when it came in, it came in. There was no way to control the rods. Felt like I was fishing back home in Mississippi River. This drag as well. The sun coming up. Let's hope something happens this morning. It feels good. I had to go home. I had on shorts. And I said, hold up. Let me go back to the house and get my waders on just to get a little bit of temperature to my body because it is a little chilly out here. Once you get in this open space, you can feel it. So I said, nah, I'd rather be comfortable. I just go back home, chalk it up. Get him. Oh, there we go. That's on that easy flea. Let's see what kind of action we get. Please don't be hard here in the city this morning. Please come in sideways. So far, so good. Got a sideways look. It is coming in sideways. Let's see. Oh, they got another one. Oh, Papa no. And then the other one just took off too. There we go. That's one. That's one. The other one just took off too. Let me go see if it's another Papa no. See if I ran into a school. Time. Oh, the line's flat, so it might be. It might be. I don't know if he stayed on. He may have got it.
there got me. But I think that was him too. All right. We do have one so far. All right. And that's on an easy flea. Nice size pop like that. He'll do, your hand size. Like I say, with fish bites, that's the beautiful, that's the beauty of these. If the fish are active, you can put these right back out there and go for another one. Throwing it back into that second gut. You know what? Now I actually got my mind made up that my best time of catching popping those, period, is when you can get into that second gut when the water's not really going out, but just maintaining. If you can hit that second gut pretty much at this time of year, you can pretty much get into the popping hole. Let me go get this other one out of the water and check it. I think that was on the shrimp that I had on it. But I got shrimp fish bite on there though. So we'll see. Uh oh, another sideways. Might be a small one. If it is one. Yep, little small sandwich. Little small sandwich pumping over. People don't believe, man, how good they take these off. They may be small, but there's some place size ones out here. But these small ones, man, are just as good. Look at that. He wasn't even hitting it hard. He was just nibbling. And I said, let me come up on him. Let me catch up with him. It's on the shrimp flavor fish bite with a fish tail on it. I mean, the shrimp tail on it. I'm just putting a small piece of shrimp on the end of it just to entice them and then give them to stay on that fish bite if they want to hit it. This right here, this would be a whole, whole cook right there. You don't have to go and buy no live shrimp. I say one of the places I like going to is Clams. Clams got some of the best uh, dead shrimp I can get from them when I do go up there and get it. And it kind of, it saves on money. It does, because if you buy a pint or a quart, you're already looking at $20. And you can probably, if it's just you fishing by yourself, you're not going to go through $20 worth of shrimp. Unless you're just going to stay out there all day until the shrimp gone. So you're just going to get some dead, about a pound of dead. That'll be about the same size as a quarter shrimp. And if it's fresh, then it's a win-win. Plus, I want it because I want the odor on it. I want the smell. I want the bed to be strong enough to stay on my hook, but I want that smell. So that is the reason why I love my dead shrimp. That scent grabs everything. All right, so that proper note right there, he did not pull it hard. Of course, he was a small one. But if it was a big one, he probably would have gave it some pull, gave it some action. That's two. People always, I always see people use the popping on rigs, and like I say, whatever lane you in, enjoy it, ride it, do what you do. But me myself, I just go with. I'm old school, so I just go with the regular single swivel uh, with a pyramid on the bottom. Depending on what the water depth is, how fast it's moving, that's how I, that's how I pick and choose what weight size I'm gonna use. But I just use a single a single swivel. I don't need to double rig it, any of that. And the only the only other reason I like it because it's more safer for what else might hit. Inside these guts, there are big black drum, big reds, Spanish. Um, I don't know about kings, they come in as close right in, inside the surf. I know in the channels we can find them, but as far as the surf itself, I've never seen anybody pull a king out, but there's shark in here. So 
you know, when you're fishing with those those rigs, to me, you take a chance more than anything of anything hitting your line, and then you got some that will go out there and just destroy it. So, I tried that concept one day, and I said, I won't ever go back to it. I said, that, that day was bad. I lost money and everything. Bad investment. For me, anyway. But like I said, I'm old school fisherman, man. I go with the old way of doing everything. Because it worked. Because it worked. All right, look like ain't nothing happening right now. I'm gonna save some of this battery. And while we're in between time, in the meantime, you know what, one of the things I love, I've been fishing in all kinds of saltwater areas, and until I got down to Texas, this is the first state that I've ever came to that you can actually drive on the beach. I mean, look at this. My truck is right here. I didn't have to bring no cart. I don't have to park way back there. You see that back there where those steps are at? You need places like Virginia, Florida, places like that, you have to park and then you have to walk all your gear all the way down to the beach, right? And mainly because Florida got one of the prettiest beaches that you've probably ever seen in the world. Panama City for sure. Um, it's almost like being overseas somewhere. Uh, the only place that I've seen that came close to being like that was in Barbados when I was in the military. And I remember that was the first time that I ever seen sand that was like powder. And um, it was like snow. Warm snow is what it was like. And I remember Barbados, that was like one of my first places that I went to that I saw beautiful islands. And uh, that ain't saying anything bad about being able to drive on Texas beaches. It's just saying the sand is set up where you can and should be able to drive on these beaches without really getting stuck. Now, some places here you do need a four by four. Like if you go down the pins, you definitely need a four by four. So uh, you don't need it when you first get there, but the further you drive down, that is when you probably need a four by four. So um, that is what that my truck is. It is that, so I can drive all the way down as far as I want. I wouldn't recommend going by yourself though. If you're gonna do it, try to take somebody with you, man, just in case you get into a situation. Cause once you get down there, there's no communication. Everything is off. So um, that's that on that place. But yeah, that is one of the beauties of being able to drive on these and fish on these beaches because you can set up shop whether you want to bring your family down here you can bring them down put your vehicle right where you need it grab out whatever you want put it right there on the beach and you got access if it's raining you just sit in your truck if you don't feel like leaving just go back and sit in your vehicle and uh sit there and wait for the rain to either pass or if it's too heavy at least you know you get at least you know you're not walking back to it you can just go ahead and roll out so that is one of the real things I love about um, being able to fish down here. So, a lot of fun. Still waiting to see what's gonna happen. I don't know if, uh, I'm, probably, I'm probably waiting on schools to come through, is what I think that is. The first time I cast out, I think I got here just in time where a school was holding, and both of my rods took off. I got two, but I missed the second one. The second one was a good one too. And um, I, wish I, I wish he would've stayed with it, but he let it go by the time I got the other one in. So, probably just waiting on schools and they're probably swimming through uh, the, uh, the uh, second gut, which is what I'm fishing in, and they're probably going back and forth or whatever. And, you know, just waiting on them. But at least I got two, so I'm good because I've been getting skunked on Papa No as of late. I haven't been able to really get into them like I wanted to. It seemed like the timing was always off. So I said this morning, before I go do what I usually do, uh, to make a little bit of side hustle money, I said, you know what? I'm going fishing this morning, and that way I'm not worrying about the afternoon, because I think that's when I'm always off track. I always go do my side hustle money in the morning, and then I go fishing between two and three, and by that time, all I'm hearing is stories like, man, this morning we killed him. <laughs> so I said, okay, let me switch it and reverse it. So we do side hustle this evening. But anyway, a um, beautiful morning, enjoying it. Uh, this is, man, this is the life. I love it. So, uh, 57 years young and living kind of the way I want to. So, it's very, very, very enjoyable, man. I'm having fun with it. So, it's been a long time waiting on this. So, anyway, let's get into it and wait for it to happen again. Fish on, baby. Stay with it, stay with it, baby. Stay there. Don't leave me.
got off. That's the thing that's different, man, when you're fishing with fish bites only and use the shrimp. Oh, okay, I got it. Or at least I think I got it. It's coming in like I got something. Yeah, a little whiting. I was about to say, that's the difference when you're trying to fish with just fish bite by itself and you got shrimp on. You're really hoping that what's hitting your line is what you're targeting, but when he was hitting it, he never pulled it over. He just bumped it, bumped it, bumped it like that first one. So I gave it benefit of the doubt. Was hoping that was going to be the same setup, but this is the whiting. And I'm just not sold on using it for cut bait. I know a lot of people like to do it, but I got shrimp, so the way I see it, if shrimp want to hit it, they'll hit it. Put another piece of fish bite on with some shrimp. the water so I don't think it is what I think it is. It's coming in sideways though. Oh hard hit. Everything's out here. So hopefully Papa knows holding on. Got two. Now I'm hitting hard heads and whiting. Get it back out there again. Everything gotta eat. Don't disrespect nature. Now some people leave these. Like I said, they leave hard heads up on the beach like they, like they, like they bad people or something. It's crazy. Got some fishermen that actually do that. Some people ask me, how did you get down at Corpus from where I'm from? Well, I did it by way of military, uh, 20 years Navy. And my last duty station, I was in Guam, enjoying it for the time being. But it just wasn't, it wasn't feeling like, like I was supposed to be, still, like I was still supposed to be there. Uh, there have been, as a matter of fact, I went to go pick them up. That was the first class, I was the first class myself. And I was already there going on two, two years, right? So I went to go pick him up at the airport and nobody ever got a hold of me to say, hey Al, your time is up. You need to be checking for your orders, right? I didn't have no idea about it. Uni, uni they'll let you know in the military your time is coming up. What do you want to do? All that. So none of this information was coming. And I think it was, I think, they knew, but they had something going on that they needed me because I was the only one qualified for it. So nobody ever communicated with me. So I picked him up and he was taking over the division. I, they pretty much moved me down to a torpedo retriever because I was a uh, craft master, kind of like a, like a small boat captain, uh, 65 foot of torpedo retriever is what I drove uh, for them. And I was the only one that was another one, but for some reason, I guess they felt that they wanted to go with me since I was a, since I was already a boatswain mate. Uh, that's what my title was. I was a boatswain mate, so I mainly dealt with boats. Started out as a painter, but I mainly transgressed over to boat driving. That's what I always try to stick to with all the boats. I love driving boats, so they knew that, trained me on it, and I think somebody realized my time was up, <laughs> and they kept it under under the cover. And they just had me on that torpedo retriever. And it was kind of weird because I had all the bells and whistles that came with it. As far as uh, not bothering me, not really stressing what was going on, it was kind of weird, man. It was just like, I knew I had somebody I had an answer to, but it was almost like I was my own, we had our own crew. And it was just perfect, man, it was paradise. But anyway, I got islanditis. And uh, when I seen that guy on the decks, and one day he asked me, he said, boss, what you doing here? And I was like, what you talking about? He said, why are you sending the vision? And I was like, I'm driving to a Peter retrieve. I ain't in this division. And he didn't say anything. 
But I kind of read between the lines, so I said, you know what? Why am I still here? Because it looked like he should have been my replacement. So I went on ahead and I called my detailer. And my detailer said both. He said, man, you supposed to been out of there. And I said, well, nobody told me. He said, uh, well, what you want to do? I said, well, I do want to leave. I'm like, I got all the night. I'm ready to go. And uh, he said, well, let me look at it and see what's going on. Kid you not. Me and this guy was on the phone for over 25 some minutes. Usually when I talk to my detailer, it's not even that long. We talk, give me some choices. I let him know what I'm trying to do. He look it up and he say, I got this, what you think? And then I say, let me think about it, get back with you, we're good. We took 20 minutes just trying to find something, right? To get me out of there. And so uh, finally, he ran across. He said, well, you almost close to retirement. He said, uh, what you, it's a place called Corpus down there that you can go to. And I said, Corpus, I've never heard of it. And then uh, he said, well, you know about Ingleside, I'm sure. And I said, well, yeah, I know about Ingleside Minesweepers. He said, well, he said, that is right across, like across the river from them. It's called it's Corpus Christi, Texas. You want it or not? And then uh, I said, yeah, if you're going to get me off the island, I'll take it. And then uh, I looked it up, told somebody about it, and he said, man, that's right up your alley. Take them orders. He said, much as you love fishing, you're going to love that. And so I said, OK, bet. So I went on ahead and took the orders, got down here, and I worked up at the Naval Station. And I ran them. I didn't really run it. I was like the only, when I was the first class petty, I was there as a biggie that was in charge of it. But on the Navy side, I was the first class there uh, at the marina. And that's how it all took place. And that's how I got down here and bought a home uh, on the island, fell in love with it. I was like, this is it, this is perfect, right? I feel like I'm right in my backyard. I can go fishing whenever I want. And he was right because as much as I love fishing, man, I used to, I used to rent the boats out in Guam. And we used to take Boston Whalers out in the uh, Mariana Trench. And, and anybody know about the Mariana Trench? Oh my God, oh my God, y'all witnessing it. Y'all are witnessing it. There it is. Something is serious. Something is serious. Uh, don't break, don't break. This is what you are. Don't break. Let's see what we got. This is why I don't like using the Pompano rigs because of things like this. You just never know what you might run into, especially with these sand fleas, fish bites. You just never know. Man, I just hope it's a good, good fish, whatever it is. Coming in like a red. Then again, it's coming in like a nice popper no. Like a nice size popper no too. That's what he coming in like, a nice popper no. So anyway, that's how I wind up in Corpus Christi, y'all. <laughs> but days just like this. But somebody told me, as much as I love fishing, you're gonna love it. And that is what I love doing. I've been fishing all my life. Grew up fishing in St. Louis, fishing the Mississippi rivers, lakes. Things like that back home with my old man, rest in peace. My Uncle Phil, my Uncle Richard. Having a ball. It's peaceful, man. Love it. But anyway, and that is on the sand flea. Well, y'all see how hard that, y'all see how hard he hit it? He hit it like a soldier. He was serious. He was serious. That's a nice size popping on right there. That is a nice size. Let me get it back out there though. Hopefully it's a school holding up. Get another one. All right, on that easy flea. Thank you, Mr. Pompano. Now, anybody not used to surf fishing, like I said, if you're used to surf fishing, then this is over you. You don't have to worry about it. But those that say they want to try surf fishing, but they haven't done it, Always remember, man, have these drags set to run. You don't want them set where it's gonna run so fast that your line gonna bird cage, but you do want it set good enough in case you're not there. Because just as fast as you've seen that last hit, from the distance I had to travel to them, let's just say, for instance, that was a red, or let's say that was a shark, or that's a black drum, any other fish like that. Papa is strong too, and y'all seen how hard he pulled it. But if that would've been a red, that would've been a steady pull, he been going. You've been trying to go with it. A shark probably would have cut the line anyway. I'm not even going to worry about that. 
Uh, nine times out of ten with these rigs, the way I set them up, the single swivels, they grab enough line that they pretty much cut it. They get wrapped up in it and cut it. So uh, that does happen more than more than often whenever a uh, shark does hit it. Uh, but that being said, always leave the drag a little loose and have it ready to go to get that fish some, some uh, leeway. That way he can think he's going somewhere and he's just pulling your line off, but he's not gonna pull it so hard that he gets so much tension that it, that it snaps. This is a 50 pound braid that I got on, got on this. And let me tell you right now, it don't matter. I've had fish shatter this line uh, when they pull and hit it hard. Sometimes, even if I got the drags set to run, I've also I've seen them where they just popped it like it was nothing to it, like like butter. So uh, be careful of that. But anyway, man, I love that hit. That was nice. Hopefully, I get some more. That's number three. So feel like I'm getting another hit. We'll see. I'm kind of superstitious, man. And one of the things I don't like doing is bringing my chair. Now, some days. If it doesn't work and the fish not biting, then I wish I would have brought my chair, because then I'm like, man, I could have sat out if I knew the action was going to be like this. But when I have a feeling, I just say, nope, I'm not taking my chair. I plan on standing up because I don't think I'm going to have time to sit down. And if I do have to sit down, I don't think I'm going to sit down for long. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to jinx myself by bringing my chair, So because once you sit down, you pretty much saying, you just out here to relax. You ain't here to work. You're, you're sitting down on the job. So. I don't want to sit down on the job. I want to stand up and be ready for the action. So I left the chair sitting at the house. I didn't bring it, and I'm glad I did. Let's see, got something. Look at that rod. That's that current pulling. There's no seaweed out there. I'm not bringing any seaweed in, but hey, seaweed can come in at any time. You just don't know when it does. You put one minute you cast, it ain't nothing hitting it. Next thing you know, you got seaweed on your line. But I don't think that's the case. It's just more of that that uh, tide, I think that tide's still going out. So, I got a window. We got three, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And I got a small window. If I get six, I'm good. Whatever I get, I'm good. But if I get six, I'm, that's perfect. Because I love my pompano. Let's see if we got it here. I'm about to take place. Now the other one I got the shrimp fish bite on there because black drum are still in this surf. I believe they are, just for some reason. I haven't been able to connect with any of them in the surf like I usually do this time of year in November. I usually hit them big ones just, to, just, for, just for the fun of it. The uh, 40s and the 40s close to 50 size inch. And uh, they usually I can hit them. But this year I haven't found any. And the water conditions today is perfect. It's kind of greenish, but a little bit murky at the same time. It's a little mixed in. So, I don't know. Usually I hit them just right in them gusts. They be going right through them gusts, just like everything else. And you'll hit them on the fish bites. That shrimp, that shrimp, easy shrimp, is usually what I use to grab them. That electric chicken. But that does not seem to be the case. So, but if it's popping though, I'm happy. So that's what I'm really targeting anyway. Let's go. Catch anything. Like, got a little buddy on the end. They begging for me to try for, for cut bait. But like I said, man, I eat whiting. So anything I eat, I don't like using it for cut bait because they got to get bigger. Whiting is a good tasting white fish. You know, nobody don't know that. If you catch whiting, you own something here. It's got to be a little bit bigger. 17 inches. Give it a... Uh, right now it's November, so I think... Probably next month, the big ones might be in. You can come out here with some fish bites like this, and some shrimp, some dead shrimp, and cast away. Peel that shrimp out, throw it out there, and if them 17s are in, it's on. It is on. Drop that line like a popper, no. The line put a, a big catenary in it, then it came back up. Popper, no, when they hit, that's usually what they do. That's the tail sign sometimes. Let's see, though. 
So whitey, whitey, I guess do it too. <laughs> but you know what? That's that size I'm talking about. I don't think he's a 17, but he's got enough girth, girth on him that he can go home. He's got enough girth on him that he can go to the house. Like I say, man, you take these guys, fry them up whole. You can fry them up whole. If I get them big enough, sometimes I even, well, I take that back. I usually just fry them whole. I tried filet one time. Lost more meat than anything. But everything, love this easy flea. Telling you, man, I hit sharks on it. I hit blues on it. Buffer fish too. Big buffer fish like easy flea. Nice little bit, look, nice little scamp. You know what? I'm gonna throw him back. <laughs> I just thought about it. Mama don't want me bringing too many more fish home, but I said if I get popping though, it's a difference. So she's all right with that. I already got white in the freezer. So you get pardoned, buddy. Go ahead. This is gonna be a nice whiting again. Uh, nice popping though. Here's the top of the water, and then I already know my answer. I got my answer. If he comes in sideways. Let's see, what are you gonna do? Not coming in sideways because he's too small, but I don't mean too small where you can't keep him. I just mean he's too small where he don't. He can't mess with this rod. This rod got him. Number four, baby. So that's two on the easy flea and two on the uh, shrimp fish bite with the shrimp. So right now they even steven as far as who's hitting the hardest. Number four. Nice, man. Nice, nice, nice. Pretty fish and tastes just as good, too. Tastes just as good. Woo! Take them all day. Having fun, baby. This is what life is all about. Having fun, doing what you like to do. Doing what you love to do. Man, water coming up. I thought the tide was going out. I have to bag my truck up a little bit, get it out of this area. It's coming up a little bit too hot. Make sure I hit my wheel well. All right, get right at the wheel. I'll bag it up some. Just a little bit. Water going in and out, hit that real well. Woo, enjoying this. Perfect wind conditions. Need a little bit of wind, not too heavy, not too light, just good enough. I like the wind between 12 and 13 miles an hour. Size six weights can hold in this. You get that, that water moving around. Throw the fish off a little bit. Pump. Right. So we got one nice pump for the cooler. 
There you go. I love catching those birds. Hopefully it's catching it. Let's see where y'all at. Should have caught them. There they go, making that V. So it looks like time may be coming to an end. Water's coming up, but there's nothing happening. It was good while it was lasting, though, because I got here early enough that I was able to get five light size pompano, which is what I was targeting. Some on the easy flea, some on the shrimp flavor. I got easy flea on all three and nothing's happening. Nothing's touching it, not even the whiting. So, it'll be a good thing. But I know right now, popping is not touching it. I slid down a little bit further toward Mustang, which is over here at Fish Pass, to see if I can run into them down this way to Pompano, because the area I was there looked like it kind of got died. It looked like it died down, and the water was coming up a little bit higher in that area than it seemed like it is here. So. Try to see if they may be holding up in here somewhere. All right, that don't look like anything gonna happen. Uh, look like it went dead. I got all three lines out and nothing hit anything. So, look like it's that time of the day where the action is slowed down and maybe it'll pick up again this afternoon, but I've been out here since this morning and um, starting to get hungry. <laughs> so it's time to go get something to eat and uh, probably just relax and chill out for the rest of the day. I came out, got what I was targeting, that was popping out, got five of them, so I enjoyed it. Um, until the next time, y'all, this is out, I'm out. Y'all be cool. Peace. All right, so now we get to the good part, cleaning. Time to get another one clean. So this right here is actually a Pompano uh, clean tutorial. In case, like I said, there's always people that catch fish, but they don't know how to clean them. They get kind of nervous, don't want to mess it up. But it's pretty easy, pretty simple. Uh, it takes practice, so don't believe me. Don't think everybody that started cleaning fish just jumped right into it and did it right the first time they got to it. So anyway... Uh, taking the pompano and the same thing he's big enough that he can be filleted so we're going to go here around that 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 fin right here and i'm gonna work my way back then i'm gonna turn it to the side and i'm just going to cut and fillet that out of there and it's going to be all white meat and that's going to be a fillet for the pompano so and these are so easy All right, turn it over. Cut this light back on so I can see. Oh, shit. All right, so that explains why that looks so tough that I couldn't get it out. The blade in my, one of the blades was coming out. Hold on. That was weird. All right. So with these Apollos, man, you got to make sure that you, especially if it looks like, that sound better. All right. So anyway, we're going to take it and I'm going to put my knife there and I'm just going to run it. Straight down his backside. Get my finger in there pretty good. And just keep on taking the blade and working my way. 
Papano is real easy to clean. It's not hard to clean these guys at all. Cut that off, and there you go. Take that little gut from the inside. I got a small stomach, so it's nothing major. Clean that out of there. And there you go. Now, me, myself, I don't like to remove the skin. I leave it on because it's not going to hurt anything. I'll leave, I'll leave that on there. And also, that would be what I use to cook with. So when I'm cooking it. But there's your filet right there. That's a nice poppin' though filet right there. Like I said, the skin, you can leave it on. That'll hold the fish. To me, I like letting the skin stay on because it keeps the fish whole, right? Because when you fry these, because I fry mine, when you fry them, it tries to curl up on you. So that's the reason why I leave the skin on there. Then cut it, turn it to the other side. And just do the same thing. Just follow right along the spine. Work your way to his tail. Oh. Ugh. We ain't cutting. We're going to let it go. Let it keep going. All right. Popping no meat, man, it's so easy to go through that you almost need to be patient. Need to be patient when you're doing it, but once you get, do it enough, you know exactly what you look, what you're trying to cut. Cut this out of there. There you go. Another piece ready to go. It's nice. Take that gut, clean that up out of there. When I rinse them off. I'll get all the rest of that done. But there you go. Nice filet, Pompano. And man, you're talking about a great tasting fish. Pompano, if you haven't had Pompano before, if you go to a restaurant and you can't catch them and they serve in Pompano, I highly recommend you try it. It's very good. You can cook it however you want to cook it. Uh, have it done. You can fry it. You can tell them to blacken it. However you want it, man. You're not going to go wrong when it comes to the taste of this fish. Pompano is almost the same thing when people talk about crappie. That's the way I can relate to it because if you hear somebody talk about crappie fishing, it is something they love catching, something they love eating. That is the same way it is with Pompano. When we think they're in, everybody and their mama's going to be out there on that surf. And they got Pompano rigs. Everybody got their way of doing it. Like I say, I'm old school. I just take a regular single swivel clamp, uh, get the right bait, which is the fish bites I like to use, which is an orange and flesh color. I like using those. Um, and a size two or size three, I recommend octopus. I like the octopus hooks. I use circle as well, but I like them octopus hooks um, a lot better because I can actually take them out of the fish just as fast as they get hooked on. It's not, it's not a lot of manipulation as far as getting that hook out of their mouth once you get them. Um, but that's it. So anyway, that is another tutorial as far as how easy it is to clean the pompano. Hit me in the comment if you um, got a question about it. And at the same time, you can go back and look at it again if you missed something that you thought you missed. But anyway, this is Al. I'm out. Y'all be good. Enjoy your weekend. We out. Peace.